If you have the Bible, look at the Second Corinthians chapter one, verse twelve to twenty-four. Second Corinthians chapter one, from verse twelve to twenty-four. Second Corinthians chapter two, so chapter one, verse twelve to twenty-four. Now this is our boast, uh, our conscience uh, te testify that we have uh, conduct ourselves in the world and especially in our relation with you in the holiness and sincerity that are from God. We have done so not according to the worldly wisdom but according to God's grace. But we do not write to you anything you cannot read or understand and I hope that as you have understood us in part, you will come to understand fully that you can boast of us, just as we will boast of you in the day of the Lord Jesus. Because I was confident of this, um, I plan to visit to you first so that you might benefit twice. I plan to visit to you on my way to Macedonia, Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and than to have you send me on my way to Judea. When I planned this, uh, did I do it lightly? Or do I make my plan in a worldly manner? So that uh, in the same breath I say yes, yes, and no, no. But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was uh, preached among you by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. For no matter uh, how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him the Amen is spoke by us to the glory of God. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our heart as the deposit guaranteeing what is to come. I call God as my witness that it was in order to spare you that I did not return to Corinth, not that we lord, uh, lord it over your fate, but we work with you for your joy because it's by faith you stand firm. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. You can speak to us by your word. You made heaven and earth by your word. Would you recreate us by your word? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This evening I would like to share with you yes and amen. Can you lift up your two hands and then one left to say, can you say yes, yes. and amen? <laughs> you know, yes and amen is very important. Yes and amen. And then you can see the sound. Yes and no, no, no. Yes and amen. You can see the sound. Yes and amen. This evening, I will share with you yes and amen. I know the one pastor in Korea, you know, he was a pastor of the mega church. The name of church is Amen Church. Amen. <laughs> I never <laughs> ever heard the church name is Amen Church. I think over 3,000 members, quite a big church. And uh, that pastor is a wonderful man of God. And then Amen means I agree with you in Christ Jesus. That is mean Amen. Amen. If you look at the verse 12, uh, in our relations with you in the holiness and sincerity that from God. Do you understand? Holiness and sincerity come from Almighty God. Also, by the grace of God, you are living holiness and sincerity. Do you know God looking for people in these days? God searching the spirit of living God moving everywhere in the world. In Europe, Africa, Asia, South and North America, Israel, Middle East. God looking for somebody to use him by God. Those who are living in holiness, those who are living in sincerity but only from God, only by the grace of God. And look at the verse 13 and 14. Do you know Paul say, you understand it. Do you, do you understand, you, you, you read the, this, uh, you know, my letter. This is this letter yeah, from Apostle Paul to send to Corinthian Christian. 
and then understand my letter and you read it. Therefore, you will boast of us and then we will boast of you. Did you understand? Can you boast of my brothers and sisters because of they are doing well in Christ Jesus? Did you understand? Paul say, you boast of you. Yeah? And uh, you will boast of, do you know, uh, we, we will boast of you and then you will boast of me. That kind of uh, attitude, what Paul say. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 31 say, Therefore, and it is written, let him who boast, boast in the Lord. Yeah? Anybody boast, boast in the Lord. Yes, I can be boast in Christ Jesus. Yeah, it is written, let him who boast, boast in Christ Jesus. And look at also 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17 and 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17 and 18 say, Let him who boasts, the boast in the Lord. For it is not on one who commend himself who is approved, but the one who, whom the Lord command. You see, because of Jesus, you're doing very well. Because of the, by the grace of God, you're doing well. That is why I can be boast about you. Do you understand? Be boast because of Jesus. Do you know when Paul say, I'm boast about you? Why? Because you're doing very well in Christ Jesus. I thank you to God. That kind of attitude. And verse 15 and 16, Second Corinthians chapter 1, and Paul say, I have confidence. Do you know? I was confident of this. What is confidence? Confidence is faith. I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, last Sunday you did very well the cleaning the carpet by carpet cleaner and I was wondering, did these people they clean the carpet cleaner? When I come back, I didn't see that. The carpet cleaner is still dirty water inside there. Do you understand? When you know what I need to do, you can do it. And uh, I saw you clean and then I saw the some inside dirt. I use the clean water, I clean again in the in the car park. Do you understand? I have. I love to have some confidence uh, uh, in you. When I give some job for you, you do your best. Not because of you respect me or what. You respect the Jesus. Do you understand? When you respect the Jesus, you did your best in the eyes of the Lord. When I was a youth pastor in the London Full Gospel Church, is the biggest Korean church in Europe. Is the London Full Gospel Church and 1,200 members gathering together. The church is in Lanes Park. When I was a youth pastor over 20 years ago, do you know what I did? <laughs> the service started at 11 o'clock. Morning service, the Korean service. Do you know what I did? I arrived there before 9 o'clock, around 8.30. And do you know what they did? Because I, I was young, over 20 years ago. <laughs> and then I removed my, the, my suit and my jacket, and then I clean all the floor and the hoovering. I spent almost two hours just before the around the 10:45. I finished all the cleaning job. Why? Because that hall is uh, the like the the youth club belong to the Church of England. They are renting the, that hall to the worldly people, <laughs> the social club. People they smoking and drinking, full of cigarettes on the floor. I smell it. Beers, oh, empty beers, all of them. Smell. I opened all the windows. I cleaned all my bags, every sweat, <laughs> because of I working very hard. Why I say to you, I, wo I was working very hard, not by my own power, not by my own strength, only by the grace of God. By the grace of God, I was working. And then whoever come to the church, they then I put us the fresh hair, and then people they saw oh, very nice. But they never know the condition. <coughs> Two hours ago, somebody gave the sacrifice. Somebody do the some job. Do you understand? Everything, everything. Do you know, before I come here all day long, I prepare the message. I prepare for tomorrow mission to Canterbury. The shopping and the prepare something. Even yesterday, I went to the you know, Sister Alice's house to clean the, our minibus. <laughs> You know, minibus is quite big, and I clean. And then I come with uh, some cloth, and I cleaned. 
Did you understand? No one asked me to clean the mini bus. And when I was praying, the Holy Spirit telling me what to do. Do you understand? That means it's a sincerity, sincerity, integrity. Do you understand? Be diligent in the eyes of God, but by the grace of God. Do you know, Paul say, if you look at the 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, Paul say, he say like this, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. Who are all of them? All of the disciples of Jesus. I was working very hard. I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. You see, the grace of God came on me. I was working very hard, more than any other people. Do you know, in the coronavirus time, I think I was working very, very hard, more than anybody. Not because I'm a diligent man, not because I'm not working, no, because of grace of God. That is my scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10 say, I work very hard more than anybody because of grace of God with me. It's not by my power, not by my, my strength, but by the grace of God. By the grace of God. It's very important. By the grace of God, I can work very hard for the glory of the Lord. And now you can go back to Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. And do you know what the Bible says? At the same time, yes, yes, no, no, don't do it. There is no middle ground. If you say yes, especially you have to say yes in Christ Jesus. Unfortunately, many people say, pray about that. The born again Christians say, like they pray about that, what is meaning? Do you know you are born again? What is meaning? You don't know? Almost 90 percent is no thank you. <laughs> do you understand? <laughs> if I ask you somebody, do you want to go to a mission field or to the, some other country for preach the gospel? Uh, let me pray about them. It's nothing wrong. Pray about it. It's a very good answer. But it's a make a lot of excuse. <laughs> Almost 90 percent is a no thank you. <laughs> Leave me alone. That kind of attitude. Do you understand? But the Bible says, look, verse 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 say, When I planned this, did I do it rightly? What do I make in my plan in the worldly man manner? So that in the same breath, I say, yes, yes, and no, no. Verse 18, but as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. You see, you have to say yes and amen. Can you say after me, yes and amen? I couldn't hear you. Can you say again? Yes and amen. <laughs> More louder, okay? Yes and amen. Yes and amen. When God says something, can you say, yes, amen? That is a proper attitude. In the same mouth, yes and no. There's no middle ground. Many, many silly Christians, they live like that. Do you understand? <laughs> Jesus died for you. Yes or no? Yes. Maybe. No, maybe. Almost born again still. Not born again. Almost I got to heaven. Still you got to hell. Do you understand? 99 percent, 99999 you are saved. Still not born again. Don't tell me, oh, I almost born again. If you die now, where are you going? Go to hell. Do you agree? If you don't agree, you need to repent your sins. <laughs> Do you understand? There's no middle ground. Yes or no? Jesus died on the cross for your sins and my sins. Can you say yes and amen? Yes and amen. Don't say, maybe I may think about it. And I was preaching yesterday in Florida. And then I saw the young couple with a baby. And I preached the gospel. Would you like to give your life to Jesus? Oh, maybe not today. If they died yesterday, even today, I know where they're going. Go to hell. I didn't tell them you go to hell because you don't, you know, I don't want to upset uh, these uh, people in front of the baby. But uh, this is so silly. Yes and amen. Why? Because of verse uh, 18 answer, God is faithful. You see, this answer, God is faithful for us. Can you say amen? God is faithful, brothers and sisters. God is faithful. 
you and me many times not faithful before him but God is faithful God is faithful that is why you are in here if he is not faithful you are not in here or that you are in hell I know God is faithful he is faithful look at the verse 18 why we need to say yes and amen why because God is a faithful God is faithful that's the answer God is faithful that is why you need to say amen yes in Christ Jesus look at the 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9 I can read for you 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9 God who has called you into the fellowship with his son Jesus Christ our Lord is faithful God is faithful many many times you and I not faithful in the eyes of the Lord but thanks be to God God is faithful that is why you have to say yes and amen God is faithful can you go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 19 in him it has always been yes in him in Christ Jesus it has always been yes in Christ Jesus you have to say amen and yes can you say yes and amen can you say yes and amen when God say to you say yes and amen amen I never met a brother James before and uh, when I received a phone call from Pastor Kim, do you know what I say? The Holy Spirit said to me, open the door for Mr. James. I say, yes and amen. That is why you are here. Do you understand? I never knew you. I don't know where you came from. I didn't know you. But when the Holy Spirit said to me, open the door, I say, yes and amen. It's very important. Whatever Holy Spirit says something for you, yes and amen. Yes and Amen. In Him, and He has always been yes. Yes. Look at the verse 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through Him, the Amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Can you say yes? Can you say amen? amen? When you say yes and amen, do you know what you want to happen? God is the glory and honor and power. I saw so many times, many times, when God spoke to me, say something, when God spoke to me, I said yes, and I said amen. Many, many years ago, I was working by the, some street in King's Cross. I used to live in King's Cross. When I lived there, I used to live on the upstairs of the church, like they, like they tell you guys. You know, I was a minister. But best place, I tell you, best place to dwell, dwell in the house of the Lord. I will stay upstairs. And I have the church key. I come downstairs, I pray. Actually, that church is American church. I was enjoy. Day and night, I was pray. And I bring the homeless day and the night. And then, you know, one night after 10 o'clock, it's a freezing cold weather in winter. <coughs> when I'm walking by, I, I need to be you know, surprised because of uh, the back in the corner, it's so dark, nothing in there. Look like very dark. And then some scaring, something moving, like a hat, the, the cat. Cat is come out from the box. A paper box. Oh, scary. Something moving. But there's no animal coming. Somebody inside the box. I come close. Do you know what I saw? Freezing cold. I saw the Scottish guy, Mr. Andrew. Mr. Andrew stay inside of a box. At the 10 o'clock in the evening. I asked him, would you like to come to my house to stay in my house? Do you know what Jesus spoke to me before I say to him? Jesus spoke to me. Take him to your house. Look at him because very cold, dangerous this weather. He may die tonight or tomorrow morning. I say yes and amen. Uncomfortable. I was tired. It's a freezing cold. I'd love to go back to home quickly. But God spoke to me. Take him. What did I say? Yes 
and amen. I too came in. <laughs> you stay in my house for over six months. You stay in my house. And God changed it completely. And then thanks be to God, God gave me the new, new one bedroom flat and then wonderful new life. Praise God. Do, do you understand? When God says something, say yes. Can you say yes? <laughs> Can you say amen? <laughs> When God says something, please say yes and amen. If you say no, no thank you, you miss the blessing. You miss the miracles of God. You miss the glory of God. Do you know, look at the verse 20. The Bible says, if you say yes and amen, what was happening, what's going to happen? God is the glory and honor and power. When you say yes and amen, yeah, you have to say yes to Jesus, amen to Jesus. When Satan says something, no, go away, Satan. Do you understand? Plan of Satan is still kill, destroy. Yeah. Look at Luke chapter one. Luke chapter one was thirty-four to thirty-eight. I can introduce the one lady. Her name is the Virgin Mary. Luke chapter one. We don't worship the Virgin Mary, but we respect her. Unfortunately. You know, many people worship her. You don't need to worship anybody. Do you understand? Worship God alone. Don't worship the Mary and John and Peter or Paul. Just a, just a human being. Don't worship me or so. <laughs> yeah. Don't worship anybody. Do you know you're a human being? You are just a, a God created things. God made you in the image of God. You are not God. Only worship God alone. Not angels, you know. In the in the in the book of Act, you know, people they try to worship the worship the Paul. They made the they made the name of God. Do you know how to name of it? The delivery company in UK, Hermes. Eh? Hermes. Hermes. <laughs> Hermes. They made it. The Greek god. People they bow down before Paul. You are a Hermes. The delivery company. <laughs> Can you imagine? Look at Luke chapter 1, verse 34 to 38. Luke chapter 1, verse 34. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Can you imagine? She never sleep with a man. She's a virgin. But Holy Spirit, I mean, so the angel of the Lord spoke to her. You will receive the Son of God by the Holy Spirit. And verse 36, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be a barren, is in her sixth month. But nothing is impossible with God. Verse 38. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. What does it mean? She said, yes and amen. You see, that kind of uh, answer. Do you know, everything are possible. Nothing is impossible with God. And she said, I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered. She, she said, may it be to me as you have said. I'm a virgin. She's around 13 or 14. Young teenager girl. She said to Angel, as you say, uh, we'll receive the Son of God. Can you imagine? She said, yes to you. She said, amen to you. That is a wonderful attitude. When you live in this world, you have to say yes and amen. When you say yes and amen, your life will transform in a short time, leftily. Do you, want to, do you want to start a new life? You can say yes to Jesus, amen to Jesus. Don't make excuses. Do you know some people say, oh, no convenient time, no convenient situation, blah, blah, blah. They make excuses all the times. Noah announced it. God will destroy the whole world by a flood. Therefore, come to the ark. He preaching for 120 years. People make excuses. This is Noah and his children is crazy people. What are they doing? 
they build the, the huge like the boat on the middle of the mountain. What they doing? Even these days, I gave the leaflet. I preached the gospel on the street. What you are doing? When Brother Patrick preached the gospel on the street, get your get a job. <laughs> Can you imagine? People thought his uh, brother Patrick is unemployed, and then that is why he, he he working on the street like preaching like that. Did you understand all kind of people they speak like this? But I have good news for you. This woman Mary, yes. Amen. Had you said something, had you promised with me, it be uh, made to be, it made it be to me, and you have said to me, and you promised with me. I'm a virgin. I never know the man. But do I get a baby, son of God, Emmanuel, Jesus? She just received it by faith. This is very important. Can you go back to the Second Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty one? God wants to give us uh, anointing. It is God who make both us and you and stand firm in Christ. He anointed us. You see, verse twenty two. Who has got ownership of your life? Ownership is His. Set His seal of ownership on us. He owns you. You belong to God. If God say to you, you are mine, you belong to me. Do you know? Your ownership is no more yours. Look, very interesting. Do you know what the Bible says? And the Holy Spirit comes on you and you uh, deposit. Do you understand know deposit? We want to we want to upgrade our minibus. Uh, we our church paid deposit <laughs> to get our new minibus. I think sometimes next week we will get a, a new minibus. And then, thanks be to God, they want to give us our old minibus, 4,500 pounds. Can you imagine? And I say, praise God. Do you understand? We trust in Jesus. And then, we pay the deposit. Holy Spirit is deposit in your life. Holy Spirit dwell inside of you. Therefore, you belong to God. Who owns you? God wants you. He put the dip, deposit, who is a Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the deposit in your life. Look at the verse uh, 20, uh, 22. Set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our heart and your deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. You see, you belong to God. Already he paid the price for you. Do you know when Jesus say, it is finished, he paid a price for you. He paid for your sins. Do you understand? You know, I was working in the Brixton prison for 20 years. Some people, they get a sentence, penalty. What kind of sentence? The way of sin is what? Death. You and I supposed to get a death penalty. Death penalty. But somebody came to me, I will pay for your debt penalty. You are free from prison. I will pay for you. And he died on the behalf of me. Who is, what's his name? Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He's not wonderful. He's the one died. Wait of sin is dead. But he paid for me. He died for me. On the behalf of my own sins in the past and present and future. He's not wonderful news. Beautiful news. Good news. That is why I share this good news. Jesus paid your penalty. Did you know that? Jesus paid your death penalty. Did you know that? They don't care. Oh, I don't have a penalty. <laughs> Do you know that kind of uh, mentality? Verse 23. I called God as my witness. See, God is my witness. Who is your witness? Your Mother and father, your brother and sister, your wife and husband. No, God is my witness. He said, I call God as my witness. That is, was in order to spare you that I did not return to Corinth. God is my witness. Look at the Romans chapter 1 verse 9. Book of Romans chapter 1 verse 9. I can read for you. 
God, whom I serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his son, is my witness how constantly I remember you, all the Roman Christian who stay in Rome. God is my witness how much I pray for you, how much I love you. God is my witness. Dear brothers, did you pray for me today? Did you pray for me today? This morning or up to now? Did you pray for me? Be honest. Did you pray for me? I pray for you. Since you came here last week, since you came here last month, since you came here last year, December, I was pray for you daily, day and night. God is my witness. How much I love you, how much I support for you. Do you understand? God is my witness. Please, you have to, can you pray for me? Yeah, please pray for me, brother. Then when you pray for me, you will get the blessing actually. Why? Because uh, it's a blessing is not one way. Two ways, come and go like this. I was interceded for you. I was prayed and pray. I don't know how many hours I pray for you, brother. I was praying for you. When you start to pray for me, the prayer is uh, the how much I pray. Is in a storage in heaven, and they come up on you, brothers. I know. Best place in the world is where you are now. <laughs> Do you reckon? Don't tell me a very boring place, nothing, <laughs> no internet. <laughs> you know, this is only cross in there. <laughs> it's only empty. <laughs> Repent your sins. <laughs> Do you understand? That is why, you know, some songwriter, Psalm 23. The goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I dwell in what? The house of the Lord forever. Forever. I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. Best place in the world is dwell in the house of the Lord. Then actually my house is the house of the Lord. I dwell in my house of the Lord. I was praying in my, you know, uh, the, the uh, library. I was praying in my prayer room. Also I was praying, I was meditating in my room. Do you, do you understand? I made my house as a house of God for all nations. Yes. Look at the verse 24. Can you go back to Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24? Not that we draw uh, it over your faith but we work with you for your joy because it's by faith you stand from you see you work we work with you for your joy yeah because it is by faith you, are, you stand from by faith you stand from actually by faith I live by faith not by sight it is impossible to please God without the faith do you understand? By faith, I am pleasing God. By faith. Everything I have to live by faith. If you look at the Romans chapter 14, verse 23. Romans 14, 23 say, it's the last verse of the book of Romans 14. But the man who has doubt is condemned if he eat, because his eating is not from faith. Everything that does not come from faith is a sin. You see, even whatever you're eating, eating by faith. How many you breathe out, breathe in by faith? Yeah, do you do? <laughs> oh, Pastor, what are you talking about? Automatically, naturally, I breathe out, breathe in. No, by faith. Do you know the brother Sami, he one day, when he forget how to breathe. <laughs> I never heard somebody forget how to, he, you know, he was no Christian at a long time, so he, oh, like this, he, and then he, he, he memory come in, he start to breathe. He forget how to breathe. I never heard somebody forget how to breathe. <laughs> and then, oh, that message touched my heart. Uh, by faith, I can breathe. By, breath, by faith, I preach the gospel for you guys. <laughs> by faith. Live by faith. Not by sight. Yeah. How many of you use the toilet by faith? Oh, toilet is a toilet. <laughs> no, live by faith. Yeah. Everything by faith. I go to 
Kent of Ritonado to share the good news of Lord Jesus by faith. By faith. I drive my car by faith. I pray by faith. I meditate the word of God by faith. I preach the gospel by faith. Everything live by faith. That is why the Bible say, you know, everything that does not come from faith is a sin. Don't commit the sins. Everything. Not only eating and drinking, not use the toilet, no. Everything that does not come from faith is what? Sin. Don't commit the sins. Today, if God says something, you have to say yes and amen. Can you lift up your two hands? On the left hand, you will be yes. On the right hand, you will be amen. Can you say yes and amen? Once again, yes and amen. Yes. And uh, give a uh, 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 bit again. Yes and amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, once again, yes and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. If you live like this, yes and amen. Hallelujah. You will see the. Hallelujah. Hallelujah means praise. Yeah, I mean Yahweh. Hallelujah means praise God. Yes and amen. Unfortunately, many, many Christians, not thank you. No man. <laughs> I saw plenty of people. Their life is still living in the darkness. I saw. <laughs> yes and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you say again? Yes and amen. Hallelujah. Once again. Yes and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> if you do it, you'll be prosper. Why I come to here tonight in the church? Do you, have the, do you think I have plenty of time now? I come here to serve you, serve you guys. I say yes to Jesus. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I saw that. Yes. And amen. Hallelujah. For me, to be a missionary in UK is a miracle. As I told you, when I arrived in UK, I knew only hallelujah and amen too. Can you imagine? Hallelujah. Amen. I couldn't understand English. But whenever I pray, whenever I meditate the word of God, God spoke to me, go into all the world, especially preach the gospel in central London. I did. Yes. And amen. And hallelujah. I saw. I saw. If you say no thank you, the blessing of the Lord is uh, passing by. You miss the blessing of the law is left behind. When God says something, you have to say yes and amen. I saw it. I'm pastor. Do you know what is my job? Do you know Jesus is my senior pastor. He is a high priest. I'm just an assistant. Whatever Jesus spoke to me, I say to the congregation. I saw some of our members, they are like the sheep. Do you know sheep? Sheep. Sheep, do you know the sheep, they are so blind. Do you know maximum to see, do you know how many meters, sheep? Four meters. I can see you now, yeah, around the four meters. They have to, if a sheep stand here, cannot see, they, they cannot see my wife. Sheep is blind, almost blind. Have you seen that I put in the, my Facebook uh, video uh, this afternoon? One, uh, one shepherd boy, because the sheep is uh, go inside the pitch and remove it. And the sheep so happy and the jump and go into the pitch again. Did you see that? I will show you very soon. That is sheep. Therefore, actually, Jesus say, feed my sheep. All the members is a his sheep. What is my job? Feed them. And then correct them and encourage them and rebuke them. Sometimes rebuke is very important. And they encourage them and training them and teaching them. But unfortunately, some sheep is, uh, leave me alone. No. That kind of attitude, can you imagine? Move, attack them. I saw with all my eyes. At the moment, two, two people. If you look at me, two, two, I don't know who you are. Two, two people, they are, no, listen to me. I begging them, come and worship God together. Oh, Pastor, blah, blah. Do you understand? I saw. I'm so sorry. Do 
you understand? That is why, you know, pastor's job is very important. Why? You can guide them and helping them and training them and rebuke them, correct them and go to heaven. If a pastor not correct them, not rebuke them and not train them, not teach them, do you know what happened? The sheep go to hell, the water pitch. Therefore, my job is very important, also you too. Those who are training in here, your job is very important, brother. Very important. Please say yes and amen. Can you say yes and amen? <laughs> amen? Once again, yes and amen. Hallelujah. More, you can do it more than that. Once again, one, two, three. Yes and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let you pray. Can you lift up your whole hand? One hand. Yes. One hand is amen. And when you're touching, yes and amen, when you're touching together, you can see the hallelujah. God, this is the glory and honor and power. Father, I pray for my dear brothers and sisters right now. They say yes to Jesus. They say amen to Jesus. When they say yes and amen, you can see the hallelujah. God, this is the glory and honor and power. Father, help us to obey whatever you require to us. We remember your promise. We obey. You say yes and amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you say yes and amen? Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Praise God.